Welcome everybody to the Virtual Excel Academy. We're glad to see you here with us. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are. We're here with you too. My name is Amaya and our hosts are Charlotte, Leanne, and Cheryl. Hi everyone, welcome to the Virtual Excel Academy. Charlotte Cushman is our, one of our hostesses from Paths to Literacy, Perkins and Texas School for the Blind. Hello, Charlotte. Hi, everyone. Welcome. We also have Leanne Grillot, the Director of National Outreach Services from APH. Hi, Leanne. Hello, everyone. Welcome. And today we have a very special guest presenter who's going to work with us on learning beginning Abacus. I hope you all have your abacus with you, but if you don't, we'll give you some trips, tricks to be able to maybe do something at home without an abacus. Amy Mason comes to us from Gateway Regional School District in Massachusetts. She is a TBI and also a comms. So welcome, Amy. Hi, Cheryl. Thank you so much for welcoming me. And hi, everybody. I'm so excited to work with you today on Beginning with the Abacus. So I have here with me my good friend, the Cranmer Abacus, um, with all of its little bumps and all of its um, rods and a nice plastic frame. So I would love it if in the chat box, you could just let me know if you have an abacus at home. You can get a little bit of help from your helpers if you like. Just yes, if you could tell us who you are, where you're from, and if you have an abacus, that would be fabulous. And in case you don't have an abacus, here's a simple idea that you can maybe perhaps pull together at home. I've used a regular pencil, but anything like even a chopstick would work. And I've strung together pipe cleaners, but again, if you don't have pipe cleaners, you could use yarn or string or ribbon, maybe some leftover ribbon from a birthday gift that you got. And then I just took some beads. I've seen people use macaroni, if you have maybe some macaroni noodles. And um, Amy will explain how we've configured it. But basically, I have three different pipe cleaners. There is one bead above the pencil and four beads on each pipe cleaner below the, pipe, below the pencil. And so we'll talk about why it's configured in that shape. But if you have these materials at home and you do not have a regular abacus, then you might want to just go and grab those things and we'll hold off for a moment as you as you get your stuff together. And in the chat window, we see lots of people popping in from Kentucky, Massachusetts, Durham, North Carolina. Welcome, Deanna. Welcome, Noah from Pittsburgh. Welcome, Aisha. Hello, Jennifer new from New Hampshire. Keep on coming in with those messages. We love hearing from you. And Amy, I'm going to let you take it from here. Uh, Cheryl, I want to give a special shout out to our first guest from New Zealand also. Thank you for joining us from down under. Welcome. Wow, how exciting. So this is incredible. Wow, welcome everybody. So I do see in the chat box that some of you do have an abacus at home and that's wonderful. And some of you don't have an abacus and that's fine too. Um, I'm going to make sure to try my best to give a lot of verbal description of what I'm doing. I also do have the visual up and I do have the Crammer Abacus visually presented. So um, those of you following along visually can also see what I'm doing. Um, please be, feel free to um, write in. I'll have a moment for questions um, shortly after we go over some of the basics here. So for those of you who have an abacus at home or happen to have one in front of you or are able to see one on the screen here, um, go ahead and check out your abacus. Just kind of run your hands over it for a minute or take a look and let me know what shape is the abacus. That would be a great thing for you to start with. And if you're able to, just for a bonus, why don't you count the sides that it has and the corners that it has? Okay, somebody's telling us it's a square. All right, that's a great guess. Anybody else have some ideas? All right, four sides I see, a rectangle, four corners. All right, 
rectangle. Great. These are some great guesses. So our abacus is actually shaped as a rectangle. We know it's a rectangle. It has four sides. Perfect. And it has four corners. The reason we know it's a rectangle rather than a square is we have two long sides and we have two short sides. All right. A square would have four sides that are all the same length as one another. So our abacus is a rectangle. And to get started, if you have your abacus, I want you to put it down flat on a surface in front of you or nearby. A uh, hard surface is best because we will be moving the beads that are on the abacus at some point. And if you put your abacus down, like I'm going to do right now, and you run your hands over the top of the abacus, you should hear this awesome sound. So I want you to try and make that awesome sound too, if you can. All right, and now, once you've done that, if yours doesn't quite sound like that, if it sounds a little bit more like this, and it's smooth when you touch it, you probably have your abacus face down. You should turn it over so the smooth side is flat against the table, and then you'll be able to feel the beads face up on top. All right? So what I'm going to do to get us started is I'm going to familiarize you to the parts of the abacus and give you some language to go with the different parts of the abacus. If you run your hands along the outside edges, you will notice that this is the frame. So the part, the rectangle part that we were talking about earlier that has the four sides and the four corners is called the frame of the abacus. Um, at the very top of the frame, if you have a Cramer abacus from APH like I do, you'll probably notice that there's raised, there's some raised stuff in the center. It's just the raised letters that say APH. If you bring your hands down around the sides and along the bottom, you'll probably feel um, some textures. You'll feel some little bumps and some little lines. And these are, um, I, I always mix up my language when it comes to these, um, but I've heard them called unit markers or um, rod locators. And they can be used to help us locate our position on the abacus when we're trying to move the beads in order to place a number on the abacus. Um, you'll also notice that if you bring your fingers up, that there's another, um, there's another piece of plastic that runs through the center of the abacus. And there are beads below this piece of plastic and beads above this piece of plastic. And this, um, this piece of plastic has a couple of different names too. It's called the separation bar or the counting bar. Or because I'm an O&M instructor, I like to work in my O&M words and I will sometimes just call it the horizontal bar. Um, so you might hear me use all three of those or just say the bar, that's sometimes easier, okay? So we have this bar. This bar becomes very important because it's what helps us understand when a number has been put on the abacus and when there's not a number put on the abacus. Um, we have beads. So down below our counting bar, we will notice that on the different metal rods, which are also called columns, we have um, four beads on each rod, all right? These are called the units or the ones beads, and each one is worth one. So, for example, if I were to take a bead in the far right column on my abacus and push it up toward the, um, the counting bar, that would mean one. And if I were to push another one up in that same column, that would mean the number two. Can you show okay. us what you're doing while you're doing that? I sure can. So as I bring up, I'll bring up the abacus and present it to the screen here. So I'm working on the far right hand side of the abacus. And I'm going to move in my first on the far right, I'm going to take one bead down below the separation bar and push it up so that it touches the separation bar. And that's one. If I go down below the bead that I just pushed and bring the second one up, now I have two. So my abacus is actually showing the number two right now because I have two beads pushed up against the separation bar. I'm going to move those beads away from the separation bar, pushing them back down. Now I have one. And now everything is back to the way it was to start with. So this is an important thing that I don't think I mentioned already. When you start with the abacus, before you do anything else, 
you should make sure that all of your beads are pushed as far as you can push them toward the frame. So don't break your abacus, that's important not to break it, but make sure you push your beads, um, your ones beads down below should be pushed as far down as you can get them. And then the beads up on top are very special. Those are called the five beads. And we're going to push the five beads all the way up toward the top of the abacus. The five beads actually have a value of five. So I don't want to um, confuse or overwhelm anybody, but for those of you who know a little bit about money already and are familiar with nickels, a nickel is worth five cents, and you can think of these five beads in the same way, that even though it's only one bead you feel, it's worth the value of five. So we, whenever we have a five bead pushed toward our separation bar, it stands for the number five, okay? And if I push the bead away from the separation bar, it goes back to being zero. So it can be a lot of fun to count by fives on the abacus too when we get there. Does anybody have any questions so far about the abacus and its parts? I think you've got everyone really paying attention. <laughs> okay, we have one person who has an abacus who has two beads on top. What's <laughs> the difference? That's a really great, great question. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know. I know it's a different kind of abacus and that those, um, that those abaci or abacuses or abaci are out there, um, but I actually don't know what the two beads are on top. Um, does anybody else happen to know? If you happen to know, go ahead and add to the chat box. Um, this is Leanne, I can give yep. you a little bit. Those two beads, it's a, it's a different type of abacus and there actually has two five beads and that abacus would have those two five beads filling a 10 in that first column and since we in America don't do that that's why we uh, traditionally uh, use the one five bead abacus. Okay. Yeah so hopefully that helped with that question. Okay so if there aren't any other um, I'm just going to wait one more second in case there's any other questions coming through and then we'll continue on to practicing numbers. Looks like you're good to go. All right, sounds good. So um, what we're going to get into next is setting and clearing numbers on the abacus. So what we are going to do is we're going to start in the far right hand column. So um, if, if you're kind of not sure about your right and your left, something that can help is, if, is that most people have a dominant right hand. Not everybody does. Some people have a dominant left hand. But um, for most people, it'll be the cane in which they might use a pen or pencil. It might be the hand in which you use a cane. Um, if you use a brailler for writing, it's going to be the hand that usually brails dots four, five, six. So um, that's the side of the abacus that we're going to start on, the right hand side. And we're going to work in the first column from the right. And so I generally refer to that as the first column. And we're going to start really simply, we're just going to count to four. And we're going to count to four by beginning with zero. So double check and make sure all of your beads are pushed to that as far out to the frame as you can get them. And then in that right hand column, we're going to push up the first bead toward the separation bar. One. We're going to push up the second one. Two. Now push up the third one. Three. And then finally the fourth one, four. So now go ahead and check your abacus and make sure that you have all four beads pushed up toward the separation bar. And if you do, just type yes in the chat box so that we know that you're with us. Okay, great. All right, lots of yeses coming through, that's terrific. Awesome. All right, and now from here, we're gonna go backwards. So we counted up to four, and now let's count back down to, until we have zero, okay? So we're gonna start with our four and count back. So say it with me, you've got four, three, two, 
One, zero, lift off. No, just kidding. <laughs> now I do get a little silly. It's true. Hopefully I'm not going to get too silly here, but it happens from time to time. So we have, <laughs> um, we now have our abacus is all clear. So is everybody with me on the zero, th zero through four, because we're going to start bringing in the five beat and I want to make sure you've all got the hang of the one, the one through four. All right, fantastic. It looks like we have people coming through who are all ready. And if you're not ready, just let me know, okay? Um, we can always slow down the pace if we need to. So I'm gonna count back up to four again. So here we go in that far right column. I'm gonna put my fingers on the beads and I'm going to start moving them up. One, up to that separation bar. Two, three, four. Now here's where the magic happens. Remember earlier, you might remember I said something about those five beads up on top above the separation bar. Now what's going to happen is we've counted up to four. We're going to sneak our finger up on top and this is a two part movement to get to five. We're going to push down the five bead toward the separation bar, but at the same time, we're going to push all four beads away from the separation bar. And this will give us the number five. So what you should have now, if you have successfully gotten to the number five, is you have one of the top beads or the five beads pushed all the way down to the separation bar. And then the four lower beads or the ones beads pushed away from the separation bar. Everybody with me so far? All right looks good. So we have our five here. Now we're going to go from five and we're going to head on up toward nine. All right. So we have our five. Can anybody tell me what you think is going to happen next? How are we going to get to six from here? We've got the five against the separation bar and students, please. I know that there's some grown-ups out there, but students, if you can give me your answers and let me know, that would be really great. Okay, add, I see push one bead up. All right, these are some good answers. So yeah, we're gonna push one bead up. We're gonna push one bead up in that ones column. So we now have two beads pushed toward the separation bar in that ones column. We have the top bead pushed down and we have one of the ones beads pushed up and that's gonna give us our six. Yep, move beads under the separation bar up. So we've got six and we're gonna keep on going. Let's go seven by pulling another bead up, then eight and then nine. So now at this point, you have all of the beads in the column pushed against the separation bar as far as you can, as close as you can, okay? So we've successfully counted all the way up to nine. So now we've got to count down from nine. You ready? And we're gonna start by taking the beads we're going to basically go in reverse. So it's like an O&M where you have to reverse your route. You have to go past all the same landmarks, but in reverse order, we're going to do that here too. So you're going to start at the bottom. You're going to take the beads away from the separation bar. So we're going to push away. And now we have eight. Push away for seven. Push away for six. Push away and we have just that five bead left. Now, if you remember, going from five to four and four to five is a two-part process. So we're going to take that five bead away and push up the four unit speeds at the same time to go from five to four. So now I have four on my abacus. Three, push one away. Two, push one away. One, and zero. No lift off this time. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> All right. So I love all of these comments and all of this feedback that I'm getting in the chat box. This is terrific. How is everybody feeling about this going from zero to nine so far? Do you have the hang of it? And do you have any questions? All right, Amaya says good. Yay. Melanie okay. says good awesome. and Teresa says good. Aisha says good. You are ready to move. Excellent. All right. So let's, um, we're going to move it on up. We're going to set a nine. Okay. So here are some words that I haven't, I don't think I've said yet. 
So when we say set, we mean push everything up toward the separation bar, okay? So when we set something, that means we're pushing it toward the separation bar. When we clear something, it's like social distancing, we push ourselves away from the separation bar, okay? So set is moving the beads toward the separation bar. Clear is moving them away from the separation bar. So I'd like for everybody to set their nine in that far right column. Okay, so all of your beads should be pushed toward the separation bar. We're gonna go from nine to 10. So this is gonna be a fun little movement. To go from nine to 10, we have to get out of our one column that we've been working in so far. We've gotta go over to our neighbor. Okay, so we're gonna go over to that second column and we're going to move one bead one of the unit speeds up while also at the same time clearing our first column. So if you have 10 set correctly, what this is going to look like is it's going to look like a unit bead or a one speed pushed up in the second column from the right. And then the first column from the right will have no beads pushed up against the separation bar. Okay. Now from here, we're going to go, we're going to go from 10 to 15. So in the, um, in the first column, we're going to push beads up toward the separation bar to make 11. Another bead in that first column to make 12, 13, 14. And then if you remember our rule about going from four to five, we're going to bring that five bead down and clear the four below. So now you should have for the number 15, you should have one set in the tens column and then the five bead set in the ones column. How are we doing so far? Do the simplest, okay. This is a good question. I'm seeing some good questions come up here and I'll be able to stop in a moment here to answer some of them. But everybody's good. Okay. Terrific. All right. Great. Um, so I can stop and take any questions. I know we haven't, we haven't done a ton just yet, but I want to make sure that everybody's kind of on the same page and things are going well. Um, I saw a question back there about symbols in the lower bar. So that those dashes and those dots, are those braille? The dashes and the dots? That's a great question. They're actually, um, they're tactile markers. So what they do is they help you figure out, um, they can help you figure out what rod you're on. And this becomes really important as you go through Abacus and it's important to keep track of where you are in terms of your place value, making sure that you're in the tens place when you mean to be in the tens place or the ones place when you mean to be in the ones place. Um, and then the there's some longer lines that, represent the breaks in between groups of numbers. So for example, um, if I have, like I might wanna set a really big number. And if I set a really big number, the longer lines help me keep track of what are called the periods or the, group, the groups of three that are usually separated by commas when we write or braille it out. Um, so they're basically placeholders. You can also use them to help out when you get into doing things like decimals on the abacus. So it helps you position numbers for like adding or subtracting decimals or money or things like that. So, um, Is there only one type of abacus? No, that's a great question too. There are lots of different type of abacus. And you know what's really cool about the abacus is that it's been around in some form for over 4,000 years. So. I went to Wikipedia, so I didn't like thoroughly vet my sources. I didn't do a lot of extensive research, but I did find out that the abacus has been around for a super long time um, and there's different variations about it. I know somebody mentioned earlier that there are um, two beads. They have the two beads, um, two five beads up on top, and that's one kind of abacus. There's also um, various counting abacus abacuses or beginner abacuses that, um, that you can use that are just, you have a rod and it has nine beads on it and you can count up to nine. And then when you go from nine to 10, you clear the nine and you set one bead in 
the next column, sort of like we just did on our Cranmer abacus. And um, so those are all different tools you can use too. Can you show and describe how you use your fingers to simultaneously move those four one beads up? The four one beads? Sure. So I'm going to do um, off to the far right when I move all four of my ones beads, I actually start from the bottom. So if I'm setting, I will start from the very bottom of the abacus and I'll just bring my finger up, slide it up until it doesn't go any further. Okay, and what it does is it pushes all four beads up toward the separation bar all at the same time. Okay. Does that make sense? And then I can go up to the top of the four one speeds and push them all the way down all at the same time. I definitely encourage everybody to play with your abacus. I know I've had a lot of students in the past who really like to set all of their beads. And if anybody, if I have any older students in my audience, I want to throw you a question. So if I were to set a nine in every single column on the abacus, write out in words what that would be. <laughs> so I'll, like, you know, would it be 9,900,000, what would it be, okay? Um, is there a reason for it to be vertical and not horizontal like traditional abacus? Um, I don't know the answer to this question either. I, I think it's just kind of, it can be easier for some people to use this way. Um, it does line up a little bit better with place value in math class. So you can, you can if you think about how we learn numbers at school, um, we learn to write, maybe we learn to write the number 12, for example, and we have a one and then it's followed by the number two. Um, and having the abacus situated in a horizontal fashion like this helps us do the same thing that we would be doing in school. We can set a one followed by a two rather than having the, the numbers arranged vertically. So that would be my idea. I don't actually know the science behind it or if there's a researched reason for it. I don't know the research, but Japanese and Chinese are what we have based the Kremner abacus against. It is a Russian abacus that is horizontal, which you would often see in a primary school with 10 beads on each line going mm -hmm. across. Okay. Well, cool. I think Madeline has her hand raised. Can we see if Madeline has a question? Go ahead, Madeline. Madeline, do you have a question? Um, hi. Hi, how um, are you? Good. Um, can, um, can, can, um, can you hear me because I have my, because I have headphones on? Yes, I can hear you just fine. Um, um I was like wondering, um, I heard about this app during a recent time called the U Abacus app. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if it was accessible with voiceover because I'm blind. Mm -hmm. um, that's a great question. So U Abacus, I have only tried it with, um, with some of my students who have low vision. Um, it, as far as I know, it is not accessible as an online abacus with voiceover. Um, it's, it has some high contrast features to it, but it's all, it's all done by touch um, and auditory, but um, you, can't, you can't feel the beads or anything like that. And I don't think voiceover lets you actually navigate um, the visual image of the abacus. Uriah, what's your question? Hello? Hi, how are you? Good. So my question is, why is like all the beads like cramped up? Like they're not spaced. Hmm. Why are all the beads close together? Yeah, this is a good question too. And I think um, 
I think there are different kinds of abacus and you want to keep, you want to make sure that the beads are fairly close together so that you can keep track of them. You don't have to go too far to search in any particular direction for where the, where the beads are that you want. Um, so one of them, one of the reasons I'm guessing is just to make it a little bit easier for people to use. So you don't have to like wear your hand out by pushing things back and forth all the time. Um, that said, I know that there are out there, there are some um, types of abacus that are, they're not necessarily specially designed to be used just by touch. The lucky part about the, the Cranmer abacus is that it has felt, it has a soft surface underneath, right, to help keep the beads from moving. And I know that there are some abaci out there that, um, they don't have like a backing and so it's easier to move the beads and the beads are more cramped and it's e and it's okay for visual use but some people who rely on their sense of touch to use them might have a little bit of a harder time just because the beads are more narrow or they're more close together but does that answer your question okay and you have aisha who has given you the answer <laughs> <laughs> nine comma nine 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 comma nine 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 comma nine 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 comma nine nine nine. There are thirteen nines there. That's a lot of nines, Aisha. I like it. So, what place value does it go to? Do you know the answer to that question? It goes up into the nine somethings. Is it the millions, the billions? What's going on there? Yep. Go ahead, Aisha. Go ahead, Aisha. Answer the question. So, the one. Ten hundred thousand million ten million million million. I think trillions. Nice, you're exactly right. It's the nine trillions place. Nine Great trillion job. nine hundred ninety nine billion nine hundred ninety nine million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. I'm tired. <laughs> Very nice job. All right, so we've had, a, we've had a few questions. So let's move on because we had left off with 15 and I think we're probably ready to, um, to keep on going. So going back to our abacus, I'm going to set a 15. So I'm going to slide up a, a unit speed in the second column from the right and I'm going to slide down a five bead in the first column from the right. So I have a 15 set in place I'm going to count from here up to 20. So you can probably see where I'm going to go with this because you probably remember when we went from five to six, we started in that first column on the right and started pushing the beads up to count. So we're going to do the same thing here. We have 15. I'm going to go up 16, 17, 18, 19, and now we have to get ourselves to 20. So does anybody have any ideas as to how to get ourselves from 19 to 20? What are our beads going to do? While you're thinking about that, I'm going to throw out a quick joke here. Of course, it's a math joke. What kinds of mat meals do math teachers eat? Square meals. <laughs> oh. All right. Shall we ask Uriah? Uriah, you had yeah. your hand up. How are you going to get to 20? So I was actually thinking like, just like move a, one of the five beads up to the okay. separation bar. Okay. All right. So if we move a five bead to the separation bar, that's going to add five, right? Mm-hmm. So if we're at, we have 19 right now, we have a one bead pushed up in the second column on the right, and then we have all nine beads pushed up against, I'm sorry, a total of nine pushed up against the separation bar in the first column. How do we get to 20 from here? What's that going to, what are we going to do? I think do? just move one more bead up from the ones column. Okay, you're really close. That's a really great guess. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to move one bead up, like you said, but we're going to do it in the tens column or the second column from the right. And then we're going to clear out or move all of the beads away from the separation bar in that first column. 
So what we're left with is we have two of the ones beads pushed up in the second column and no beads pushed up against the separation bar in the first column. Does that make sense? Yep, I see Aisha, nice job. Yep. You clear everything in the ones column to zero. Nice, that's exactly right. Okay, so that brings us to 20. And now from here, we're gonna count backwards from 20 and we're gonna go all the way down to zero. You ready? So we're gonna clear that, we're gonna clear our two. Oops, I'm sorry, that was a mistake. We're gonna clear one bead and set the nine back in the ones column. So there's our 19. We're gonna count down from the ones column, pulling the beads away or clearing them. 18, 17, 16, 15. Now remember, we push that five bead up and bring up the unit speeds in one movement. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. And now here's where it gets tricky again. We clear that tens column and move our nine back in the ones column. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, move our five up and our four, our four up. So now we have four, three, two, one, zero. And now we should have a clear abacus, okay? How's everyone doing? That was up to 20. We made it up to 20, so that's good. Feel like things are going okay so far for everybody? All right, great. So how is everybody feeling about addition? Do people feel like we could go into a little bit of addition and see how that works out for us? I'd say simple addition would be a nice idea. You got it. All right, good. So let's start with something that's pretty, um, pretty simple and straightforward. Um, how about, I'm thinking what about two plus one? That seems like a good place to start. So when we do some addition, we're going to set the first number in our addition problem in the column all the way over on the right. So I'm gonna set a two because it's two plus one. So in order to add, we're just going to set whatever it is we need to add. We need to add one, we're going to set one. And then once we do that, we count the number of beats that we have on the abacus that are set and I count three, so we know two plus one equals three. Pretty straightforward, right? Let's clear our abacus, and we're gonna do another one. This time we'll do two plus two. So I'm going to set two, and now I'm going to add two. Here we go, one. So I pushed up a bead in the ones column, or the far right column. Two, I pushed up another bead in that far right column. Now I'm going to count how many beads are left. I have one, two, three, four. So two plus two equals four. Now, could we have done this in our head? Some of us maybe, yes, if we've been doing some addition for a little while. Some of us not yet, and that's all good. So the abacus is a great way to practice. You can experiment. You could be like, hey, what happens if I set four and I try to add five to that, for example? Now, Happily enough, we can just pull down a five bead if we want. That's one way to do it. And we get nine. We go four plus five equals nine. Another cool way to do four plus five is you start with your four, and then we're going to count up our five until we get to our answer. So what that looks like is I have my four. I'm gonna bring my five bead down clear the ones below and say one because I've just added one. Now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say two and bring up a unit speed, I've just added two. Three, I've just added three beads. Four, I bring up another unit speed. And five, so now I've brought up all my unit speeds and I read my answer. I see everything's pushed up against the separation bar as best as I can get it for a total of nine, okay? So I'm gonna clear that out. And this time I'm gonna turn the spotlight on, on everybody in the audience. And I'd like you to try to do 
And I know a lot of you can probably do this in your head and that's okay, but I want you to try and work it out on the abacus, okay? Let's do three plus four and see how that goes. I'm gonna start by setting my three. Now from here, just to kind of talk you through it, because I feel like maybe I should talk you through it a little bit. We're going to bring one bead up and we're, you can say one. Bring your five bead down and clear down below and say two because we've added two so far. Bring another bead up in your ones column for three. And then I forgot where I was. <laughs> I think I took four plus more three. Beads. Do I need to do two more beads? Okay. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> um, so I'm bringing up another bead and then I'm bringing up my final bead for, for a total of eight. All right. So I'm gonna clear that one because I know that one might've been confusing and this time I'm gonna keep better track and I'm gonna focus on what's going on in my head. And I'm going to try another problem, okay? So I'm going to set, I'm going to set four. So the problem this time is going to be four plus two. Miss Amy's got it, it's in here. Four plus two, four plus two, I've got it. All right, so here I have my four. I'm going to set, I'm going to start counting up. I'm gonna say one by bringing down my five bead and clearing what's below. So that counts as one, as adding one. I'm gonna bring up a one, another one bead to count as adding two. Four plus two equals six, okay? All right, any questions? How are things going for everybody? Is it working out okay? All right. I'm saying okay. good and yes. Good. Excellent. Those are tricky, but okay. Yeah. It's a little bit of a challenge, especially if this is kind of your first time or you haven't done a lot of abacus before. Those problems I just threw at you might be a little bit of a challenge. So it's okay if you're if you're not quite clear on how to do that yet, it's totally fine. How would you add 10 plus two? 10 plus two, that's a good one. So the way I would add 10 plus two is I would start by setting my 10 on my abacus. So remember, I wanna make sure that I am setting my the one digit and the zero in the right places on the abacus. So I would work from left to right. I would set my biggest place value first, and that's the one, which will go in the tens place. That means I'm going to set that in the second column on the second column from the right. And then my first column on the right is gonna be clear. So there's not gonna be anything set there. And that's how I'm showing 10 on the abacus. Now, what I'm going to do from there is I'm going to bring two beads up in the ones column because I'm adding two ones. So I just set one, two. And once I've done that, I can read my answer, which is a one followed by a two which is not three, it's 12, okay? So that's how I would do that one. Now, how about, um, how would you get 10 plus four, everybody? I want you all to work this one out. Go ahead and do 10 plus four on the abacus and tell me your answer, but also tell me if you can, just very short, very brief thing, how many beads in each column? So the problem was 10 plus four. How many beads in the tens column and how many beads in the ones column?
might be a few people stuck. I do have one answer of 14. Oh, I'm seeing one now. One bead in the tens column, four beads in the ones column. But I think they might need to see that one. Mm -hmm. Four beads in the ones column. <laughs> yeah, so we have, so for 10 plus four, what we have is I started by setting my 10. So I'm putting one bead up in the tens column. And then I leave zero beads in the ones column because that stands for zero. So that's my 10, one followed by a zero. Now I'm going to add four. And I add four to that. I'm pushing four of the ones beads up in the ones column. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Once I've done that, I can take a look and I notice that when I check my abacus, I have a unit speed set in the um, second column from the right, and I have four unit speeds set in the first column from the right for a total of 14, one followed by four. Okay. How did you read that number that's there? You have a 14 there, but what did you read first? What did I read first? I read the, I, if I understand correctly, I read with the, your fingers. With my fingers, I read the the tens place first. So I read the one first, and then I read the four first. So, um, it is you know when you when you read your answer, you do want to work from left to right. So you want to find. Um, the largest place value of your answer and move to the right. You had one person who is a little nervous about when you have to carry or you get to a bigger number. And mm -hmm. so I'm wondering if you can show us how you added nine plus one. Nine plus one, I sure can. So the idea here is I'm gonna set a nine so when you have to carry, it works very much like this going from nine to 10. So if I have nine and I need to add one, what's going to happen is I'm going to set one in the column to the left. So I'm pulling one of my unit speeds up to the horizontal bar, and then I'm clearing whatever is to the right of that horizontal bar. So I'm clearing the nine and it becomes a zero. So when you wind up having to carry, um, you do something. You do something very similar. That's the basic idea. Um, this is a beginning the, abacus lesson. So going yeah. too much further is way too fast. Yeah, and what I what I want to say the most is don't worry about it. It's gonna be it's gonna be a okay because when you once you get practice on the abacus and you do, you practice counting and you practice setting and clearing numbers, you start to notice things about how the abacus works. And some of it will probably come very naturally to you over time. You'll start to understand a little bit about how the abacus works and about how numbers work. And when you get into learning how to carry, it'll become a little bit easier over time because you'll have had some hands-on practice and lots of experience. So what I would definitely suggest is if you're worried about carrying is to make sure that you get plenty of hands-on practice just in counting. Um, you can even practice skip counting. I know lots of kids skip count in school. You can practice that on your abacus too, like practice counting by twos. Move two beads up at a time. I'm going to skip count. Here's two. I'm going to move another two beads up and that's four. How am I going to get to six? Oh, well, I can count up to one, two. There's my six, count two more, there's eight. Okay, so playing all sorts of games like that, just counting and experimenting with the abacus can really help. Oh, I see okay. a little subtraction request too. That's a good idea. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna give you a subtraction problem. Can you subtract four minus three? Sure. So we're gonna set a four in the ones column or in the far right column. I have, a, I have the four, I'm going to take away three. And again, this is all we're gonna do is we're going to clear in order to subtract. 
So in that um, in that ones column, you're going to start taking the beads down and away from the horizontal bar. So start from the bottom and pull the beads away. We're going to go one. I have three left so far. Two, and I have two left so far. One. Okay, so I've subtracted three, and I am left with one, is what I mean when I set the one there. Okay, so four minus three equals one. I'll give you one more. Sure. What is eight minus two? Okay, so eight minus two, I'm going to set my eight, which means I'm going to set the five bead and three unit speeds on the first rod there on the right. So I have my eight. I'm sorry, did you say eight minus three? Eight minus two. Eight minus two. So I have my eight and I'm going to start from the bottom. We always start from the unit speeds when we do our subtraction and we're going to move them. We're going to count two down and away. So there's one and I'm left with seven. I'm going to subtract my two, my second one, and I'm left with six. So eight minus two equals six. I have a five bead and a one bead. And that's how I know I have six. I'll do one more. Great. 17 minus five. 17 minus five. So I'm going to start by setting my 17. That means I'm going to have a, um, I'm going to have a unit bead in the tens place on that second rod in from the right. And then I'm going to do my 17, which is the five bead on top and the, and two beads on the bottom to give me my 17. Did you say 17 minus five? I'm sorry, I'm forgetting. You are correct. That's okay. You're explaining. That's what happens when we teach. Yes, 17 minus five. All right. So 17 minus five. We can do this in one of two ways. So if we're using the counting method, which I've been, which I've been mostly relying on, we can do, we can take away the, um, we can take away the five by counting away from the, um, starting with our lower beads. We can go one, two, and we've got to slide that five out of the way and the four unit speeds up and say three. Bring one down, four, and one more down, five, and read what I'm left with, and I'm left with 12. I have a one in the tens place and a two in the ones place for an answer of 12, okay? Now, the other way that I can do that, do this if I want to, I can just look at this and notice, oh, I've got the number 17 and I'm taking away five. Well, I have a five bead set in that ones column. I could just clear that out of there and I'm left with 12 again. I have a one in the tens column and a two in the ones column. So you can do it either way and you still come out with the same answer. So we have had setting and clearing and counting and reading and just a wee bit of addition and a wee bit of subtraction, which is a lot for a beginning abacus lesson. It definitely is. And all of you have done such a terrific job following along with this and being active participants. And I'm just so delighted that I've been able to spend this time with you. It's been a lot of fun for me. So I so appreciate this. We have one more question, I think, from Uriah. Okay. Uriah, what's your question? Hello. Hi. Um, so my question is, what if you would do like, um, like 14 minus 12 on the abacus? 14 minus 12? Yeah. That's a good question too. So the way that I would solve 14 minus 12 is I would start by setting my 14. Um, so I would put that one in the tens column and put four, set four in the ones column. And I would actually, um, you know, in math, there are usually more than one, there's usually more than one right way to get the answer that you want. Um, the way that I would usually teach my students to start is to work from left to right. And you're going to start in that tens column and you're going to think, well, I have, I have a one that's 14 that I have set up here. So I'm going to go and subtract my tens first. I'm going to go one minus one and I'm going to actually do that. So I cleared, I wind up clearing the ones call or the, 
the tens column and I get zero. And then I would go to the ones column where I still have four left and I would do the four minus two part of the problem. So I would take away one, two, and I would end up with two. So I've got 14 minus 12 equals two. Now I know a lot of the time in, um, in like a, a general education classroom, like a regular classroom, you might go into, they might start on the right and work from right to left. They'll start in the ones column and have you subtract there first and then subtract in the tens column. And that's another way that you can do it too and get the answer. I see lots of folks who are interested in learning more. And so this is a great time, I would say, to practice counting, setting, and reading the abacus so you're ready for another class on the abacus. Absolutely. Yep. I would definitely encourage you to get a lot of hands-on practice as much as you can. Like, and definitely one way when I was learning how to do the abacus, one way that I really enjoyed practicing is to is to actually take problems that I knew the answers to, but try to get to that answer, you know, so I might start with something easy like five plus one, but I would practice getting myself to that answer on the abacus and pretend that I didn't really know the answer, but kind of in the back of my mind I did. And that can be a fun way to practice and kind of um, get the hang of things and do the same with subtraction too. really simple subtraction problems to start with. That sounds wonderful. I am going to say thank you very much. I am going to allow Cheryl some time to let us know what's coming up next, and then I will uh, work on any other questions that we have after that. Cheryl, can you tell me what's coming tomorrow? Of course, Amy. Thank you so much for that great beginning out of your lesson. Tomorrow is Friday, and in our house, we say Friday. <laughs> And we have a very special lesson with Valerie Warmuth, who is going to do an intro to Braille. So we hope you can join us tomorrow for Intro to Braille. Bye for now, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Bye. Amy. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, everyone.